guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna paint a watermelon. Let's get started. For this video, we're just gonna use four paint colors. These are the colors we have. I have three different Daniel Smith colors, Lamp Black, Hansa Yellow Light, Hooker's Green, and then I have a Holbein color. This is Quinacridone Magenta. So we'll see how these look on the paper. Let's go ahead and squeeze those out on our palette. My palette here is made out of ceramic and it's really nice because it doesn't slide around while you're using it and it cleans up really nicely. It's just a much, much more pleasant experience to use than a plastic palette I've discovered. And then because we want our paints to work a little more smoothly for us, it's helpful to spray them with water just to kind of activate them a little bit. Okay, so each of us has a sheet of paper that we've taped down. This is Stonehenge 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. And again, if you wanna get the same effects as you see us using here on our paper, you'll probably wanna go with a cotton watercolor paper or something heavy for sure so that it doesn't buckle with all the water that we're gonna put on it. And each of us also has two sizes of brushes. We have a larger brush and a smaller brush. The smaller brush is for seeds. <laughs> we have cups of water, paper towel, and pencils. Okay, so to start our watermelon, we're just going to create a part of a triangle. We're gonna make the two sides of it, but not the bottom just yet. But first, to make sure it's centered, can you put a little tip, a little dot right at the top in the middle of your page? Try to make it right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the point of our watermelon. And then I want you to find a spot, maybe a third of the way up, where we're going to put the other points of our watermelon. You can make your watermelon kind of wide or kind of skinny. I like that. I'm going to make mine a little bit wider. And then we'll have to leave room for the curve underneath, but go ahead and connect your two lines, the one on the left, or the two dots. Connect the two dots from the bottom to the top, like that. And then connect the other two dots. Okay, um, yours is really skinny, but do you want it to be that skinny? Um, it looks normal. <laughs> I'm just thinking it might be more fun to paint if you have more area to paint. What do you think? Um, I think I would mostly stick this shape. Okay, I was going to say we could widen it just a little on this side okay. if you wanted. Should we do that? Yeah. Here, I'll help you. So just take the big eraser and erase that line in the middle. We want it to be a nice, fat, juicy piece of watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> big, fat. <laughs> we're going to pretend it's summer. Right now as we're filming this, it's snowing. <laughs> Watermelon is a wonderful summer food and so both Ansley and I are longing for summer, aren't we? Yeah. All right. right now. The last marking we need to make with our pencil is to do a curve connecting this dot to this dot and we're just going to make a circular shape like that. It doesn't look a lot like a watermelon doesn't look like a watermelon yet, but it will, especially as we start to add the color. All right. Are you ready to paint? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is paint with water. We're going to do our wet and wet technique. So dip your large brush in your clean water and just paint your whole watermelon with water, trying to stay in the lines. I'm spreading out some of the water a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of water on your brush, you can just spread it out with your brush. You don't want any big puddles to form on your paper, but it should be glossy damp. You might have to look at it a little sideways to make sure you don't have any big puddles. And if it looks like it's starting to dry in any spots, just add a little more water. Uh-huh. All right, I think, I think you're covered. Good. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're gonna drop in some of this beautiful pink color into our watermelon. And I'm gonna start at the very tip. Okay, you can try to. And just dropping the paint with the tiny point of my brush into the tip of our piece of watermelon. 
and you drop it into the tip of the watermelon point. And I'm just kind of blotting the wet paper with the broad side of my brush and painting it in along the sides. And we're going to paint it almost all the way down, but we're going to leave a white strip right here where the white of the watermelon is. So don't paint all the way down. You can paint really fast here if you want. And I'm adding just a teeny little bit of yellow to give it some more color variety. You might need some more water on your paper. Yep, dip it in the in the water. Not all the way, don't rinse it out all the way. You don't want some of your paint still in there. And then tap it on the side of your jar to get some of the excess water off. And then keep painting your watermelon. Well, notice how I didn't paint this edge really, I just let I just let the paint bleed into the water, into the wet paper. And I am roughing up my edges a little bit. I'm making them so they're not totally perfect. Because I think it's more interesting that way. What do you think? Yeah. Once you've painted on your pink part, and some of this got a little away from me, so I'm gonna wipe that up for you. Taking what you call a thirsty brush, which is just a damp, clean brush, and wiping up the paint that might have bled too much. So go ahead and wash your brush. And I think we may need to change our water. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you see how there's still a ton of pink in that brush? We wanna get all of that out. Sometimes you have to be aggressive with how you rinse. There, I think that's a cl good clean brush now. Okay, now it's time to do the green part. So we're just gonna take a little dab of our green paint and carefully paint along the bottom curve of our watermelon. You wanna try? The bottom of my watermelon's a little bit, is a little bit too dry. So you're gonna wet it first? That's really smart, yeah. Mine got a little messy here, so I'm gonna dab some of that up with a paper towel. But it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? This is gonna be a fun, cute, whimsical piece of watermelon. Look at how I've got darker paint on the very bottom. Do you wanna try adding some really dark green along the curve of your watermelon? So just right along here. Mm -hmm. All right, now we do want to leave some white right in between the pink and the green. So I'm just going to take my clean, damp brush and lift some of that paint out. You definitely want to make sure your brush is clean before doing this technique. And then you can take a paper towel and do the same thing. There. What do you think? All right, we're going to let those dry. In fact, we can use our blow dryer if we want to speed up the process. Our watermelons are now dry, so we can paint the seeds on. So take your smaller brush this time. Yep. And let's dip it in the black paint. I'm gonna swirl it around a little bit in there to loosen it up, make it a little more workable. Make sure your brush is dry before dipping it in the paint dryer. And then we're just gonna paint some little seeds on. They're kind of these oval shapes, aren't they? Oh, those are very tiny seeds. Making them a little bigger? Just a little bit fatter. Okay. And I know that watermelon seeds are just small. 
They are small. They're kind of the same size as sunflower seeds, if you know what those look like. I think that's looking good. What do you think? That looks really cute. Very nice. All right, are you ready to add some spatter? Yeah. I think let's grab our larger brushes. Yours needs to be rinsed again. Still has green on it. And I think a yellow spatter might be kind of fun. Maybe a combination of the yellow and the pink. In fact, if you want, over here, I can mix up an orange color. Yeah. Using the yellow and the pink. That looks kind of orange. Yeah, it's actually almost a red. So, okay, it's up to you if you want to use the orange or the pink or the yellow to do your spatter, whatever you want. I have the orange on my brush already, so I'm going to use that. Try to keep your brush really close to your painting. That'll keep the spatter down on your paper rather than in your face than on your clothes. And pressing harder doesn't necessarily help. In fact, you want to kind of be light and loose about it when you tap. And if it's not coming off your brush easily, you might just need a little more water is all. Are you having trouble? A little bit. What color do you want? Okay, so I think you just need more paint on there. It needs to be really wet. See how juicy that is? And then tap right here where the silver part is. So hold it steady with this hand and then two fingers these two fingers, and then tap, 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 tap. Firmly, there you go. Wow, that is a ton of spatter. <laughs> we have a lot of fun with this technique, don't we? Yeah. All right, I think that looks really pretty. Goodness, <laughs> it's raining spatter over here. <laughs> All right, I think you've definitely done enough spatter. <laughs> If you want to mix it up a little bit, you can take a really juicy wet brush and do like a, a bigger droplet of water. You kind of have to use the tip of your brush and just sort of push it around on purpose like that. But that way you have different sizes of circles on your paper. I think it looks super cute and whimsical. And beautiful. And beautiful. And tasty. And it makes me want summer to be here. All right, we're all done. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> Please give it a thumbs up if you like it. And hit subscribe if you totally liked it.